Good morning. This is Kevin Soda on the porch at the Kevin Soda channel. Give us a thumbs up if you like it. I hope you're doing okay. And uh, I wanted to share today again about our pollinator friends. Uh, my uncle and aunt in uh, southwestern Missouri for years had, have had bees and uh, They've been concerned about the decline of pollination of pollinators that'd be uh, bees and other insects that move pollen from one plant to another. And uh, we've got a lot of clover in our yard to help them out, but not everybody does. Uh, this is an article from Mother Jones magazine. It says food for thought. Over here is the title, Plan B. Plan B, uh, it's time for the lawn to start kicking grass. That's by Tom uh, Philpott in uh, Mother Jones magazine uh, from this month. Since the post-World uh, War II rise of suburbia, the great American lawn has been beckoned with the promise of a grassy, orderly Eden surrounding a single-family fortress. Uh, for just as long, lawns have been sending bees and other pollinating critters the opposite message, buzz off. There's no flowers for you here. That's because the very essence of a lawn, closely shorn, uniform and weed free, leaves little room for the sustenance that pollinators depend on. Pollen and nectar from a variety of flowers, of course. Residential landscaping is contributing to an alarming ecological crisis. A steep decline in the high health of uh, pollinating animals whose services provide one third of the food we eat. Uh, everyone's affected. They don't just power the supermarket uh, produce aisle. Pollinators keep forests, parks, and shrublands humming. The most famous troubled pollinators are bees. In five out of the past seven years, U.S. beekeepers lost at least 40% of their colonies forcing them to scramble to create new hives. Unlike the non-native honeybee that commercial beekeepers rely on, wild bees, which do the bulk of non-commercial pollinating, don't have the luxury of human management. 20 years ago, the rusty patched bumblebee whizzed from flower to flower in 28 states. I remember them growing up, Missouri and Kansas. I think, I think I've only seen one in the last couple of years. Unlike the non-native um, uh, honeybee, these uh, rusty patch bumblebees uh, have population has plunged by 87%, making it the first bumblebee to be listed on the Endangered Species Act. A 2017 report from the Center for Biological Diversity showed that among 1,437 bee species native to North America and Hawaii, nearly a quarter are at risk of extinction. Marla Spivak, uh, professor of entomology at the University of Minnesota says, uh, bees are dying from a thousand cuts. Those include parasites, fungal diseases, pesticides, and poor nutrition linked to the disappearance of essential flowers on huge swaths of the landscape. Yeah. So she's got some suggestions there, and I'm going to share them with you in a minute. But uh, for those who just joined us, we're talking about pollinators, uh, bees, and what you can do for them in your lawn. Uh, corn and soybean fields, which cover an area almost twice the size of California, provide little nourishment to pollinators. Farmers show, shower these crops with harmful insecticides and herbicides, and as numerous studies have shown, the areas with the most intensive agriculture are the ones with the biggest pollinator declines. Thank you, Monsanto and friends. Uh, no, thank you, actually. And Monsanto comes from Missouri, where we're located. Rather than provide a respite from the pollinator dystopia found on industrial farms, our lawns perpetuate it. America's lawns cover about 40 million acres, an area roughly equal in size to the state of Wisconsin. I'll say that again. America's lawns cover about 40 million acres, an area roughly the size of the state of Wisconsin, and along with gardens, suck up 9 billion gallons of water a day, making ornamental grass by far our biggest irrigated crop. 
Uh, obtaining a perfect green patch often requires a chemical cocktail as toxic as the ones used by the commercial farmers. Spivik offers a new vision for the lawn. Cut loose the ground and plant it with, plant it, it with a plethora of colorful bee enticing flowers like ground plum and lance leaf tixie. We're not talking about letting grass go, which would mean encouraging weedy species, she says. We're talking about intentionally seeding flowering species into turf to diversify the landscape and still maintain the manicured lawn look that so many people like. You can have two for one. And that homeowner associations often require. Uh, that's why they're showing you this uh, picture of the lawn being rolled up, but actually uh, it's a combination of both. Uh, the lawn being rolled down and the flowers being planted among them. At the at her bee lab, Spivik spearheaded a project to see whether sowing flowers with short stalks into turf grass would turn lawns into bee magnets. Researchers found that turf grass mixed with Dutch white clover, self-heal, and creeping thyme drew in 61 bee species. Grass-only plots attracted none. Another benefit of pollinator uh, friendly lawn, I, I'll say that again, 61 species came in and, and joined the new mixture. Um, another benefit of pollinator friendly lawn, it needs just two or three trims during the warm months of summer. That's helpful for people who have to mow the lawn. Minnesota's Board of Water and Soil Resources, alarmed by pollinator decline, uh, just launched a three-year, $900,000 pilot program offering to reimburse people up to $350 if they are willing to add bee-friendly plants to their home, turf. The response has been overwhelmingly positive. With more than 5,000 applications, says Mary Jewell, the agency's communication coordinator. The Department of Agriculture provides funding for some commodity farmers to replace a sliver of their cropland with uh, native prairie vegetation. Farms with 10% of their land devoted to such prairie strips led to a three and a half fold increase in the number of pollinators on the farms. Iowa State <coughs> excuse me, University researchers have found. So it doesn't take much to make a big difference. In her landmark 1962 book, uh, Silent Spring, Rachel Carson denounced the wanton use of lawn pesticides. Carson's contemporary activist, uh, contemporary activist Lori Otto condemned yards as sterile and flagrantly wasteful. Uh, polemics as cutting as a mower's blade have proliferated in the decades since, but the lawns abide, they're still here. Spivak and her team come not to bury them, but to adapt them to the insects vital to the entire ecosystem and our food supply. Sounds like a good trade, guys. So if we could have this 40, let's see, 40 million acres of lawn mixed in with flowers, we'll not only save uh, bees and other pollinators, but we'll improve our food supply, everybody's food supply. Uh, I hope uh, the country is willing to take simple steps like this in the coming weeks and months and years to uh, save the pollinators. It's especially important as uh, heat is causing uh, stress on the bee population or the pollinator population, climate change, uh, erratic temperatures in any case. So uh, if there's more flowers, uh, there are more flowers around, they don't have to travel as far, the population grows, they can uh, break up and go to different places. And uh, that's good for everybody. Even the farms that have chemicals on them, it's good to have some bees nearby. Uh, Lord, uh, please help America decide what to do with its lawns and help us uh, try to uh, change things. I hope you uh, consider changing your lawn We've got some nice blue flowers in our lawn as well as some clover, uh, white clover. I hope you're uh, thinking of trying something too and saving our bees and our other pollinators and our yards and our life and our health. Thank you for coming to the Kevin Soda channel. And uh, you know what to do.